Good evening, and welcome to Round Hill United Methodist Church on this Ash Wednesday service. Ash Wednesday, for those who may not be used to Ash Wednesday, or maybe this is your first time experiencing one of these services, Ash Wednesday is the kickoff to a season we call Lent. Uh, Lent is the season of uh, 40 days before uh, Easter and the celebration of Jesus' death and resurrection, and it's a time usually marked with journeying, journeying towards that cross, uh, towards that celebration. We do uh, spiritual disciplines to help us grow closer to Jesus Christ. And Ash Wednesday is that, uh, that time that starts it by helping us to remember uh, some of the important things that we sometimes take for granted, uh, some of the facts that are hard facts for us to, to, to live with. And so we sometimes just don't talk about them facts like sin and death and morality. And so it's a reminder of these things, but it also points towards the hope of what is to come. And so we're glad uh, that you could be with us here. And if you're online, I'm glad that you can join us on this time. If you're online, hopefully uh, on Sunday, you were able to pick up one of these uh, kits that allowed you to have the ashes at home. Uh, if not, uh, just feel free uh, during the service. You can just make a cross on your forehead. It's uh, a symbol of our penitence, of our uh, offerings. So uh, even if you don't have the ashes themselves, you're gathering with us in this time of worship, and that's uh, what is the important part. Uh, but as we come together for this evening, uh, I invite us to, to start with a time of prayer, and I invite that you would join with me. There's a prayer that is in our hymnal, but it will also be on the screen it's a prayer for Ash Wednesday, and I invite you just uh, to pray it along with me. O oh God, maker of everything and judge of all that you have made, from the dust of the earth you have formed us, and from the dust of death you would raise us up. By the redemptive power of the cross, create in us clean hearts and put within us a new spirit that we may repent of our sins and lead lives worthy of your calling. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now I invite us to stand as we are able and sing our opening song, which is in this hymnal. Uh, it's called the Faith We Sing Hymnal. The song we are singing is called Sunday's Palms or Wednesday's Ashes, and it's referencing the fact that the ashes uh, that we receive are ashes that come from the palms of Sunday. And so come on in. And so this is an opportunity uh, for us to sing. And so uh, that is 2128, uh, and you can see it, or 2138, and you can see uh, the words on the screen as well. Let us sing. <laughs> Yes. 
seated. Our Old Testament reading for this evening comes from Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. It says, The words of the teacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. Vanities of vanities, says the teacher. Vanities of vanities, all is vanity. What do people gain from all the toil which they toil under the sun? A generation goes and a generation comes, but the earth remains forever. The sun rises and the sun goes down and hurries to the place where it rises. The wind blows to the south and goes around to the north. Round and round goes the wind, and on its circuits the wind returns. All streams run to the sea, but the sea is not full to the place where the streams flow. There they continue to flow. All things are wearisome. More than one can express. The eye is not satisfied with seeing or the ear filled with hearing. What has been is what will be, and what has been done is what will be done. There is nothing new under the sun. Is there a thing which it is said, see, this is new? It has already been in the ages before us. The people of long ago are not remembered, nor will they remember any remembrance of the people yet to come by those who come after them. I, the teacher, when king over Israel and Jerusalem, applied my mind to seek and to search out by wisdom all that is done under heaven. And it is a happy business that God has given to human bus- beings to be busy with. I saw all the deeds that are done under the sun, and see all is vanity and is chasing after the wind. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. And now we have an opportunity for uh, special music. And so I uh, hope uh, this may be a song that you uh, know. If you want, you can join in. But uh, we will sing, It's Me, It's Me, O oh Lord. <laughs> Now at this time we hear our New Testament scripture coming from the Gospel of Matthew. It's a traditional scripture for this evening of Ash Wednesday. It's uh, chapter 6, 1 through 6, and 16 through 21. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, 
as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret, and your father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal, like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father, who is in secret. And your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you join me in prayer? May the words of my mouth, the meditation of all of our hearts, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So earlier we read from the book of Ecclesiastes, which is not a book that is often read from, studied. It's not a book that is even often preached from, mostly for the reason that Ecclesiastes is, well, a downer. It's not the most uplifting of books. In it, there's a, a, the author who is sometimes called the preacher, who seems to be on this existential crisis trying to figure out what is the meaning of life. And as he tries to figure out what the meaning of life is, he searches for happiness and all of these things. And finally, he comes and, and puts it all together in this long sermon, which is Ecclesiastes. And as he comes, he begins right where we start with the conclusion that he has. He says, vanity, all is vanity. Now, normally when we hear the word vanity, what we're thinking of is something that is referring to someone who's maybe self-indulgent someone who all they care about is how people perceive them or how they look or things like that. That's usually what we think of vanity. Maybe we think of that song, you know, you're so vain, I bet you think the song is about you. If you weren't thinking of it, it might be in your head now that I mentioned it. Maybe when you think of vanity, you think of like the mirrors that help you to focus on yourself and to help prepare for the day, put on makeup, all that type of stuff. If that's what you're thinking of when you're thinking of vanity, that is not what the preacher is talking about in Ecclesiastes. In Ecclesiastes, when the preacher uses the word vanity, the word that he is using is much more like a word that refers to vapor or smoke. Phil Vischer, who is the, the creator of Veggie Tales and What's in the Bible with Buck Denver, he explains it as this idea that he is chasing after all these things that do not last, that go up in smoke, that they grasp at it, but you can't hold on to it. Just like you can't hold on to smoke, all these things that he is grasping at for meaning are fleeting. And this is the conclusion that he comes to, that all is vanity, all is fleeting. As we come to Ash Wednesday, we kind of come and experience a bit of this reminder of how everything is fleeting. And it's a tough word for us to get because we are a people, especially in this time, who are always on the go. I mean, we are always busy. I bet if you pulled out your calendar today, you would have two or three things that you have to do tomorrow and four or five things the next day, and it, it would never stop. All these things that we're striving after and going after, yeah, it goes too fast, absolutely. It is a mess, that's right. And, and so what's happening is when we do this, when we go after all these things, 
we find that they are fleeting. No, I don't. I don't think so. Yeah. So yeah, thank you. So it keeps uh, it keeps on going and it exponentially grows, and that's kind of like what happens with our lives. It keeps going on and on and building exponentially on itself and what we find is that we we can't keep up with this and all of these things that we are searching after going after in the end are fleeting because on ash wednesday the message that we are reminded of is a hard message it's not an easy message to hear but it's a message that comes from the beginning of genesis that God speaks to us as humans saying, remember you are dust, and to dust you shall return. God reminds us that our life is fleeting, that we are mortal, we die. Life has a beginning, and our life has an end. And it puts into perspective all that we have crammed into it. Now I have to admit, Ash Wednesday, part of it, I don't know how to put it bluntly, it sucks. I'm just going to say that. It, it does. This is, yeah, this is the second year in a row, the second year in a row that this church has gathered on Ash Wednesday right in the cloud of one of our great members, a beloved person in our community who has died. And so we're coming and proclaiming that death is a reality in the wake of our own mourning of someone that we have lost. I mean, it's not fun. It's not fun on Ash Wednesday when you put ashes on the head of your own child. And you say to them and also realize for yourself that they're going to die. I think of the chaplains working in ICUs on these days, going around to the terminally ill, putting ashes on their foreheads, reminding them of their own death. Or the chaplains in the military doing Ash Wednesday for the men and women who are going to go off into battle. It's not an easy reminder for us to have, this reminder of our own mortality, this reminder of our humanity, Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Absolutely. So, you know, that brings us to the, it is a crazy world. And that, that brings us to the, the point that one of the, the reminders that Ash Wednesday gives us is that it's, it's also a disservice not to talk about our mortality. It's a disservice not to talk about the realities of the world. You know, we're, we're hurting each other when we don't mention these things. You so when, you know, when, when we don't talk about the fact that we are mortal, that we make mistakes, that our lives are fleeting, what we do is we end up chasing those smokes and mirrors. It, it allows us to, to keep on pursuing those things which are fleeting because we haven't stopped to address what is behind it all. Now, if I challenged you tonight to think of three things that you have in the next month. Three things in the next month that are the most important things for you to do. I want you for a second to think of those things. You don't have to say them out loud, but what are the three things in the next month 
that are the most important things that you have to do in the next month. All right, just think about that for a second. What are three things in the next month that are the most important things that you have to do? Think about that. And when you think about that, now I want you to also think about three more things. But think about yourself, if you were on your deathbed, what three things would be the three things that were most important to your life? And how much does those three things that are coming up in the month relate to what's most important to your life? You know, sometimes we are shocked by how much these two lists don't interact. We come to a point where we know what's so important to us and then we put all of our energy into what is fleeting, what doesn't last, that smoke, that mirrors. In fact, palliative care and hospice care people, they talk about this regret that so many people have and the regret that people have at the end of their life isn't a regret that they didn't make enough money. It's not a regret that they have about not getting this particular job or a regret about uh, not getting into the school of their dreams. The regrets that most people have are regrets about relationships that have failed with loved ones. they are regrets about spending too much time at work. There are regrets about not showing emotions to one another, telling each other that they love them. There are these sorts of regrets. It's when this alignment of what is really our, what is about our life and what we're pursuing don't align. And as Christians, what the amazing thing is, is we have a news that is able to be offered yeah, that appreciate is a big word. That's right. We, we don't appreciate a lot of things. And as Christians, we, we learn to appreciate. And what we also do is we have a message. We have a message of something that isn't fleeting. So we, we talk about all of the rest of these things. Yeah, we, we talk about all the rest of these things that are, are not lasting, that we chase after. And then as Christians, what do we proclaim? We proclaim a God who came to us, who died and rose again and offered us eternal life. What we offer and what we proclaim as Christians is something that is eternal. In fact, in Ecclesiastes, once you get to the end of the book, he comes to this final conclusion of everything is vain, so what you should do is serve God and follow his commands. And the reason you should serve God and follow his commands is because God is the one thing that is not fleeting. God lasts forever. God is eternal. When we chase after God, we are not chasing after something that is going to go up like smoke. We are chasing after something that has meaning, that has worth. And so as we enter into a season of Lent, a season often thought of as a, a season with giving up something or spiritual disciplines, sometimes things we think that'll make us, you know, better Christians or more worthy. That's not the point of what we are doing. Instead, the point of what we do during this season is we stop and strip away all the things that are fleeting. We pull back the smoke in the mirrors and we see a life in front of us that is with Christ. And we see how good that life can be. Then we go after it. That is what Lent teaches us. It's not about beating ourselves up for being bad. It's not about beating ourselves up for not knowing everything. It's instead about pulling back that which is not eternal and going after the one thing that matters most, life with God. That's what we seek after tonight. And so I challenge us during this season of Lent to enter into these Lenten practices. These practices can be prayer. These practices can be uh, gathering with a group uh, and, and discussing a book or scripture. One of the ones that I encourage us to do is one that we will be doing together uh, as a church that's called Good Enough, kind of talking about this understanding of how what we are doing in these spiritual disciplines are not, again, to make us you know better people, but instead are there to draw us closer to God. It's a book that I invite you to, to read with, with me. Uh, every day you have like a short devotional that, that just teaches us how to draw closer to God. 
all of these are opportunities to pull back the smoke and the mirrors and to have a life that is closer with God. And so I invite us into this time of discipleship, of to this time of holy disciplines. But also tonight what we do is we gather around the ashes. We, we have that reminder that sets us off, that starts us on the path and reminds us of that mortality, reminds us of our humanity. Again, not because we are bad and wrong and horrible people that we should beat ourselves up for, but because that reminder allows us to see what matters most. It puts into perspective our lives. And so I invite you in just a moment to come forward. I'll put a cross in your forehead. I think one of the coolest things about the putting the cross in the forehead is you almost never get a perfect cross. Uh, and I think that just talks you know, to us how we are imperfect as well. And yet, yeah, exactly. Nobody's perfect, and yet Jesus Christ has come to save us. So when you have that little smudge on your head that doesn't even look like a cross, That's right. We'll get over it. And that, so when you got a little smudge in your head, that's just saying, I'm not perfect. Yep. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. Nobody's perfect. And that's 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 what we sell. Mm-hmm. Even somebody that sits and does nothing is making the mistake of doing nothing. So uh so that you know, the only person not perfect was Jesus. Jesus. Jesus was the only perfect one, and so that's what we celebrate. He was? Yep. And so that's what That's right. Yep. So in a, in a moment when you get that cross in your head, it's just a reminder that you're not perfect. Yep. And you'll see all the others, they'll have the cross on their head, and you know what that means? It means they're not perfect either. And that's that's a great, great reminder and a great sign. And so let, let us pray and give thanks for that. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we give you thanks for these ashes and ask that you use them as a reminder, a reminder that we are not perfect that we do fail, we do fall short, we sin, we are mortal. And yet, as we receive a cross on our foreheads, we are reminded of the love and sacrifice of your son, Jesus Christ, who gives himself up for us. So that even in our mortality, even in our sin and in our failure, we have life. Help us to appreciate that life each and every day and seek to grow closer to a life full in the love of God. As we pray in your holy name, amen. So at this time, uh, first I'm going to invite uh, those who are the staff to come first uh, and to receive their ashes. And then after they come, then we'll just invite you to come as you are able. Uh, so we'll invite them to come first. Uh, one of the best ways to do, if you do have bangs, uh, to pull them back for me. Uh, and then we will receive the ashes and hear the words. Remember, you are dust. To dust you shall return. Remember, you are dust. To dust you shall return. Now, I invite anybody who would like to come and receive these ashes can come forward at this time. Dust to dust you shall return. Remember you are dust to dust you shall return. Remember you are dust.
Now, I'm also imperfect, so if there's anybody who would like to uh, help me out and put a cross on my forehead, uh, I would appreciate that. Uh, is there somebody who would like to help out? invite us at this time to pray together prayer of confession uh, you can find these words uh, in our hymnal uh, and it's the same prayer that we offer up when we do communion so merciful God we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart we have failed to be an obedient church and we have not done your will we have broken your law we have rebelled against your love we have not loved our neighbors we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to hear the good news, though, that Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. As people who receive this grace and love of Jesus Christ, I invite us to offer that to one another as well as something we call passing the peace. If you're online, you can pass the peace through the comment sections with words like peace of Christ be with you. Uh, but for those who are here in person, I invite us to, to share that peace and love with one another at this time. Now, as a, a people who have experienced that peace and that grace, uh, let us join together in a closing hymn. Uh, it is called, When We Are Living, and it's a great reminder of all that we have talked about. It's on page 356, and the words will also be on our screen. So let us stand as we are able and sing, When We Are Living. <laughs> Thank you. 
In our living and in our dying, we belong to God. And so now go forth into the world as people reminded of that which is not fleeting, that which is eternal, that is the love and grace of Jesus Christ. Go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.